Hi all, welcome back to my garden journey. I'm Steve, I hope everyone's alright. It's a bit windy today so I apologise um, in advance because I know it's going to mess up the audio somewhere down the line but there we go, what can you do? Um, this isn't a tour today. What I wanted to do was just go through a bit of the scope and the sort of uh, journey I've had so far up to this point um, and so that in future people sort of know where I'm getting from when I'm saying stuff as I'm doing stuff and moving stuff around because obviously this isn't the final uh, article yet I'd say probably work wise not even halfway there but I've started to etch out the details so what it was when we bought this place last June it's July now so 30 months ago this was all just a big load of knee-high grass bit of a blank canvas uh, tried strumming it but it was too um, you know like clumpy I tried repairing it but it was all compacted and that and then I just thought you know what it'd just be easier if over the winter I just spend my time with my mattock digging it all up and breaking it all up and taking all the rubbish out all the expanding foam from the builders you know from years and years ago and that um, and yeah so that's what I did um, in the garden design initial garden design video I put out I said about having a list of stuff that you needed and priorities and things like that so for us it was the kid mainly um, what he was going to have and then that turned into did we want to get a trampoline or did we want to get him a climbing frame uh, the climbing frame wrong one as you can see uh, and then it was kind of from my point of view just making sure the wife was happy that she could put a couple of sun loungers out and things like that actually top of my priority was a hot tub um, but I think that may have been more locked down you know from the previous year seeing everyone in their hot tubs uh, and sort of thinking right I'm going to get one of them when we move house um, so anyway so initially what I wanted to do if I come into the centre was have the climbing frame there and then a sort of square patio over here. If you can imagine there's a hot tub where the umbrella is, like dead in the center, and then the patio would have been as high as the steps are there, the seating area I've put down, and then the, the, the hot tub would have been sunk into the ground. Those benches that I've used now, those stone ones, would have been steps going up the sort of center there. So similar to what, we, what we've got there, and then a little old Roman Colosseum sign curtain warning, you know, triangle coming out from the sort of back corner towards us now. Um, and essentially what it was going to be, once I decided the climbing frame needed to go there because the sun comes from sort of up there, so it's facing that, so that would be the better area for the seating than in the shade against that fence, you know, if I'd put the climbing frame over there. Um, so that decision was made and what I was going to do is have it as a kind of raised square patio uh, like old Roman style, like old Roman Hadrian villa style and then at the back where that wheelbarrow and the barbecue is with all these stones you can see is build up a wall and have like, you know, where they have the statues of the emperor's head sunk, sunk into the walls, the white emperor heads and that and just have three or four of them sunk into a stone wall at the back, stone raised patio with a hot tub sunk into it in the middle um, and then the, the split between them there was just going to be a flower bed sort of coming down between these two you know rock where they sort of rock walls are if you like it was going to be that sort of thing with a flower bed in front of it and then like I said flower bed sort of across this center um, not center, well, it is a center line sort of thing, the one coming across horizontal and then the steps there and the steps almost being a bridge over the flower beds if you like. Um, so that was all fine and dandy, so it was just a decision to what one we got, that was about 500 quid, it all came flat packed and had to build it, it's actually concreted into the ground, I don't know if you can see at the bottom there, just the top of the little metal things, the anchors that are in the ground, so anyway. Obviously when they've got a climbing frame, they've got to have a certain distance before you have anything, you know, that a little kid's going to scull himself on, i.e. a stone wall. So I put this in and then I realised I'd actually put it about, like if we split this, where the black line is, if you imagine that's a big rectangle, um, if we split that in half into two squares, the middle is that stone fence post at the back there. Uh, and then I'd put it too far to the right, the 
I sunk it in about a foot too far to the, to our right. So what that meant is when you came 1.2 meters off, it's more like where the nephophias are there are there at the back, or kind of in line with where the banana is now. So it's kind of like a foot over. And what that meant is that then the flower bed that I had was either going to have to get smaller or move over a bit, which meant that the wall would have to move over a little bit which then made this square for the patio too small and I wasn't going to be able to get a hot tub in the center with some sun loungers around the outside that was my sort of rule you know what I mean for people to walk around uh, and stuff like that so that was a bit annoying because I really didn't want to dig it all out once a concrete you know it's like big loads of not big loads of concrete but if you think just you know post-creek type thing if you put a fence post in like that for each one of them and what is there uh three six eight of them so i thought oh, i'm not going to dig it all up and i was kind of like scratching my head for ages going how can i work this around because i need something to raise the height of the patio up um which means there needs to be a hard edge somewhere but then that would have meant no flower bed going down the center and then it also meant that these steps were going to be like quite sort of deep if you like and yeah so i had to kind of knock that on the head and then i sort of thought well how about if i kept the ground level as where it is now but i dug my own custom hotbed into the ground put all the rocks around it uh, i'm a plumber so it shouldn't have been too difficult to do you know i edge it all out to a custom shape and then make it into a kind of icelandic thermal bath type feeling um, and then we just got technical issues then with the fact that if it's surrounded by rocks that's not a patio and it's not flat um, so it like it's just kind of it was kind of one of those sort of flash ideas but so yeah and then I was sort of thinking oh what you know what, what can I do and I remembered a time when we went to Costa Rica to a hotel, Nayara Hotel, if you're interested, up in La Fortuna. But they've got sort of these, almost like, they almost look like a wishing well that you step down into. But it's a hot tub and it's got like a circular table in the middle and you're sort of sat in a circle around it. And like, I sort of started thinking, oh, what if I had one of them, but I could have a openable door, like a walk-in bath, that in the summer I could do it up fill it with water and it would be a hot tub and then in the winter or when we're not going to use it sort of thing you know have that door off so people can walk inside and sit down and use it as a bench and tables anyway like you know sort of like that so and then that got me thinking to the general vibe of the garden obviously getting away from classical roman times now and i sort of thought well if i'm going to do that then i could do the jungle theme for the for the garden you know like with plants and all that so <clears throat> that's you know my brain's now moving fairly quickly and this is all sat in one of those seats there with uh some bourbon or some form of tequila and late at night and just fleshing everything out in my head i spent good few months just sat there while I was digging it all up and all that um, so yeah so then I eventually just sort of thought well yeah, I could do like a kind of Costa Rican jungle and the jungle that I like the best in Costa Rica is the primary jungle it's almost Jurassic down by Uvita um, so I sort of thought oh what's, what's like primitive plants you know in like a primitive jungle Jurassic jungle type thing rather than because there's a you know jungle garden is quite a wide definition uh, you've got your more which way I'm going which is your primitive jungle your sort of primary jungles if you want to call it that Jurassic jungles and then you've got the other way on the scale the other side of the seesaw which is like a more exotic garden which you might just have you know Mediterranean flowers and sort of you know you know like stuff like that um, so I decided I wanted to go for the ferny route because I quite like ferns anyway um, and yeah it started taking off from there really and then I, I was kind of thinking how can I get all this to tie up and it because it was going to be two squares next to each other like I said I'm still at that stage now and it was kind of like well if I do that I'm going to lose this whole center line of flower beds and then it was like sort of tying up the step back to that there because it's square and stuff like that and then I hit on the jackpot idea of making it two octagons side by side which meant they are effectively squares just with the corners cut off and where the corners are cut off um, that's where my flower beds or things could go which is what I've done you can see that like from here you know you can 
can see it's sort of two octagons next to each other and then what that means is, is that I can get an octagon patio set and put it up there and then I can kind of work my way out from that you know and blur the blur the edges and the second the next problem I had was that when I went to do that which basically all I needed to do was put two squares next to each other um, and then cut off the corners at 45 degrees and that gave me my octagons but how it worked out was that this octagon because what I did is to say it's 1.2 or 1.4 meters I've left between the edge of the wood and the black edging I had to get the distance you know mark that out from the edge of that one out mark that one out from the edge of that one out measure the distance between the two edges um, and then do that you know the other way as well effectively two squares like that and then what that meant is because that ended up past halfway like I said earlier this octagon ended up smaller than that one and what I was having trouble with was sinking up the flower beds because these are perfect triangles these you could get your protractor out and believe me measure them I've got some pictures of where I'd marked where it was all mud like that is over there under those rocks and I'd marked it all up with spray and you know it was all quite um, yeah it was quite intricate so these are all perfect now and I couldn't have done it because if that one was smaller then this edge here wouldn't carry on all the way it would be about a foot back on this side if to the left this black line that's going up the center here where the sort of that little bit of bamboo is this this one here when it gets to that one it would step up and then I'd need to fill something in there and it just didn't click and then eventually I had the second genius idea which is instead of them instead of the two edges to the octagons button up against each other have two octagons the same size and have them overlap so that you know they're, they're, they're kind of overlapped and then I can just take an average of where the two lines intersect and bring the one on the left in a bit and the one on the left on the one on the right which is technically a smaller area right a bit and they'll still be 45 degrees and marry up uh, which is what I've done and then just started to go from there really once I've got that genius idea done with it it's kind of right what do I want to put where so this is all shade these bought that I mean it's got sun now it's in the afternoon this sort of front edge but effectively that sort of first foot is in shade pretty much all the day uh, and so is that so I just went out um, to a few garden centers and just spent 20 30 quid on um, like the five aspleniums there the two Jurassic golds the polyblepharum the um, dryopterites uh, Phoenix a couple of the polystichums like that and then what I did is that I didn't have all this down for ages, all this um, black edging. So what I did, I sprayed it all up, made out where it was going to be roughly. Obviously, I didn't know the exact sizes of everything, but I just thought roughly. And then in the winter, I've probably got pictures somewhere, which I'll put on a next video um, of this ilk. Uh, I just dug down probably about a foot and a half, two foot, dug out all the heavy clay to bring this level over here. Because obviously this here was originally the same level as the patio um, so if you can see all this stuff here this is all the rubbish um, it's all the clay and the horrible soil and things like that um, and then to replace that I just went and bought um, I was buying three bags of manure at a time three bags of um, topsoil and then just building them up and building them up and building them up. I must have gone through probably overall probably about a pallet's worth of each. And then yeah, before the edges were up, I put those flings in because the thing is, I knew I liked ferns and I knew it was going to be fern heavy. But I don't really know anything about ferns other than I like them. So when you go into the garden centre and you're reading the side of the pots like that one, it says dry up to its errata on it. You're like. Yeah, nice. That one looks okay. I'll buy that. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I still don't know how exactly it's going to look in next year or the year after or any of them or how big they're going to get. And this and this is why I've just sort of been working my way out from this corner, ignoring the camellias. But um, so I sort of put all these in here, and then once I'd got this edging down and I had this bit in, uh, I then dug down and put. All the ones I had on me in there the two bananas I bought last year they're only small 
um, I kept them in the garage over winter and then once I knew where the flower beds were going to be like I said dug them all up over the winter and then as soon as April come I chucked them in first thing as soon you know probably I was probably quite lucky it didn't frost because I was a bit put them in a bit early really from what other people say but it might just be this area doesn't get much frost I think I saw a bit of frost once over winter but you never know um, yeah and then gradually just as I went out and I saw a different name on a pot I just started buying things you know like this poly podium vulgar and things like that um, and then I found a real good place what was I after um, I, I was looking online and then I seen there was a tropical one tropical shop down in um, Taunton which is only about half an hour's drive from me so I thought you know what I'll go down there and I was like in heaven they got everything there so that's when I started going oh you know what on a couple of videos I've watched you know like uh, Yorkshire Chris and George and uh, a few of the others um, they've got the Eucomis, uh, the ginger, the cannas, uh, and things like that. And they had specialist furs like this, the Bletchlam Chilinesi, which is loving the full sun. You can see I've cleared this out, but I'll do this on the, I'll go through all this on the next video. Um, you know, like Inseti bananas and stuff like that. This um, Lophosauria quadrupinata, which I only got probably a month ago now. T Rex plant, Tetrapanax, which really isn't doing well. It got that didn't like the sun we had, that 35 degree heat. I wasn't here for that either, so I couldn't keep a close eye on it. So I'm nursing it back into health now. But yeah, so essentially everything you see here isn't necessarily, it's not that it's not in its final resting place, it's just I haven't confirmed if it's in there because I don't know how they're going to grow. And for example, my next thing I'm thinking of is this flower bed here and I've got to think now how do I want it to look in the summer and how do I want it to look in the winter so that tells me that because that banana is going to be either covered up or you know had something done to it I need some evergreen interest in there and I'm thinking that I need three big evergreen ferns that are going to get quite high you know so the spreads quite wide to sort of just outgrow everything now do I want them on the corners of it so that they're sort of going into it that way that one's coming across here that one's going over the edge of the slide and making a bit of an exciting path and then I could have the flowers in the center of these um, sort of straight bits if you like so one there one where the aspenium is you can just see there and then one where that other polypodium is there sort of halfway along or do I want it the other way around do I want to put my three big ferns in those places so it covers the stalk of the um, banana as much as it can in winter and then have the flowers as the sort of centerpieces on the edges um, so that when you're walking up through when it's all done um, you know you, you sort of got a nice it doesn't really work now but that ginger burgundy that one's burgundy um, you know so you sort of it marries up somewhat and yeah the rest of this kind of just grew on from there to where we are now where I've got all these rocks to use like I said this area project Y as I refer to it is just going to be a heck octagon patio and then I'm going to backfill effectively from that to the edging um, with the red bark and then that means that they need a sort of something to keep the bark in where those bags of compost are going across there like it is under the slide or here um, this back bit is project x you can see i've got a massive slab of concrete down that actually goes all the way around there to under the seats as well because just because i'm a bit worried about stuff moving there's big rocks that's going to be a probably two and a half meter high pondless waterfall and then if you think this one that i'm sat on here that one which is quite big probably about a meter long by 50 wide that's going to jut out of it and be a table and then the two bar stools will stand on these two and then that gives seating there so that's going to be a waterfall a pondless waterfall with a bar sort of sticking out of it where the center of this octagon is um, is going to be a octagon patio and then this one which was my even bigger genius moment because i need to get from this level down i've sort of just etched it into the ground and then what i'm going to do is have a border or a fringe you might like of real grass as you can see that's not the real length I'm going to cut it back when it comes to it and then all these is going to be artificial putting green um, so that I can have a bit of a laugh and you know you can swing the putts up onto the hill and drop them down kind of thing so yeah 
Oh yeah, sorry, I just sort of forgot the intricate bits as well. Um, but essentially, this area it needs to be that high. The difficulty is, is the difference in levels getting down to that and like the transitions between the different levels. So this bit's nice and easy because it's flat. But this level of the seating needs to be up to the top of the fence at the back. That little bit I've put in there, that's my guide. Um, it needs to be that the finished height is that height and that is because this gets the evening sun here so if I'm sat in my favourite chair I can sit back I'll get you to eye height so that oh, sorry about the uh, thing but that, that's the eye height can you see all the woods in the background there and the nice open sky and if I go up anymore you can just see the top of matey boy's roof for his garage next door so i can't get any more view than that so that's literally perfectly set up as the height for me but then what i need to do is not only get this height which you can see is quite high it's probably 40 centimeters maybe 50 centimeters off of this patio um, so not only do i need to get it from that height down to this height but i also need to get it from that height down to the sort of normal height if you like of the patio and the bark and all that but then also i've got a transition there into a flower bed which is going to have a big tree fern uh, which is why this level up here is so high and matching that and then by the time you get down to the dixonia here this this smaller tree fern that is a little bit that's probably level the ground level's top um the level is the same level as the top of the edge in and then once you get a couple of foot down here you can see that rock sat on it but it, the rocks the same height as the edge and on the top so from there to there we've probably come down I don't know, eight inches well you can see it at the back there uh, where it steps down to so nearly a full plank of wood um, wherever that is 10 10 centimeters from where the seating height is going to be to that flower bed there um, also the if you look at the house we've got this garage on the side so we can do in the future like a double extension and then we'll probably come out at the back as well and we sort of said if we do it you know we haven't got any money but <laughs> when if we ever get the chance to do it we'll probably come out as far as the square patio stones um, which means that i can't put anything too permanent in there because that may be knocked down in future um, and also I had a bit of a look with the hot tub as well because if we have a sneaky look at next doors can you see their little extension they've got behind my wind detecting British flag it doesn't go all the way across here they've gone up above their garage it doesn't go all the way across but what I thought for us is that if we do the cover carry that roof on across to the edge but leave it open uh, or put some bi on that would be a pretty good spot for a hot tub in there so if it comes to it you know I can make it like almost like a Roman spa if I still feel the urge to go down that route and then yeah everything's just been sort of working off of the basics really so <coughs> um, yeah just trying to get as many flower beds in as possible um, for now still thinking of the seating area so my missus has got loads of space to sunbathe so she's more than happy the kids got that I've, I've been playing games with him where i hide dinosaurs in amongst the ferns and he goes and finds them and things like that um yeah and it's just letting it all go on from there now i'm into the particulars so i was clever and when i was digging it all up i dug in two cables from the house over there where the where the parasol is over there they end and they come all the way out there they're all in this um, trunk in so that means I've got a light circuit and a socket circuit up here which will run me pump for the um, uh, for the waterfall and you know if I want to have a socket out there for something that works quite well I was also quite clever with the irrigation which I've done a little bit more too but um, when I dug it all out I dug down I did the same thing put some in there so if I get down here you can see that's the end of the pipe there that comes straight away across here and then it rears its head just there um, and then that meant that I could carry on working and then when I came to do the irrigation I could feed that in and you can see there's another one there that goes across to there and then here um, there's actually two that come across and you can see where that's vanishing into the ground there 
Um, there's actually another one there as well, which is blocked off at the moment, which is going to be for the lighting circuit. So I can run, push a cable through there. It come out here, and I can put some funky lighting in. Um, so yeah, think ahead. Um, what else is going on? Yeah, I mean I'll cover more as I go. I'm actually half thinking about taking that little flower bed out and just having it where that sort of rear stone wall is having it as an actual stone wall like that but like I said that's a tricky transition because I've got to come from the height of the seating down to whatever height is going to be here which is pretty much where that bench is I want it to be the height that it can be used as a table for drinks you know I can put a flat stone on top um, so that's a transition I've got to work out um, yeah it's coming along I've got to think about the irrigation you can see I'm just experimenting I just did this the other day because I wanted to mimic the rain so I got a little sprayer one and then that's sort of aiming half out so that when I run the irrigation I've turned it down over there I'll, I'll do a proper video on the irrigation once I've got it all set up I'm just experimenting with it it sprays a fine mist over this area and these are all ferns and the cyathea there that needs to be kept damp you know like the actual body of it as well um, so yeah, sorry, somehow it answers got on my hand. Um, and yeah, so you know now why all these stones are here. That's all stones under there. That's all stones under there. That's all stones under there. That's all stones up there. And then I've got these beast stones here, which I'm going to use obviously on the waterfall. Um, and yeah, it's just working out the particulars and doing them really. So. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, over and now I'm going to have like a water for the irrigation, which is what I was actually started talking about two minutes ago. Um, I'm going to have some water butts there, which are linked to water butts out the front. I'm going to run that gutter down into this one because I haven't got one there. The next door neighbour's getting all our water at the moment, or the storm water off our roof at the moment. So I'll put a butt there, but because I'm a plumber, I can be a bit more interesting with it. So I'm going to link it up to probably three big butts out the front, which I can hold, which is a completely different project, which we'll get to at some point. Um, and then have it on like a sort of automatic timers um, and a self-filling thing. So if the water butts run dry, it'll automatically refill one of them with water, with mains water, enough to keep it going. And then as soon as it starts filling up again, it'll shut off. Um, sort of thing so yeah that'll be down there the other side of the parasol as much as I can keep it in there and like I said uh, the wind is causing me issues so I'm thinking about either putting what do we call it? is it a trellis on top you know to just take I can just run all the way across there just to break it up a bit a fence post in where that sort of bit of concrete is between the curbstone and the top step that comes up that I can sort of attach a trellis to going across to the main fence where these curb stones are just to break up that wind a little bit maybe do the same equivalent over there because it's all got a mirror if you see what I mean in, in some ways because it's I, I like organised madness I provide the organisation the plants provide the madness but they still need to be orderly <laughs> so yeah well anyway I've waffled on long enough I've got to be near enough half hour so uh, yeah but I wanted to get it out there so as I'm doing stuff people don't get the wrong impression that this is all finished um, it's not by a long way I'm just getting them in the ground so I can see what they grow like and that's effectively what I just spent half an hour talking about <laughs> okay right cheers see you in a bit have a good one